All right, how I built my gas fire video number two. So we've gone over the main gas fire body. And what we're going to do now is go over the cyclone filter. Um, some people use them, some people don't. In my particular situation, uh, I'm, I knew I wanted one right off the bat. Uh, I wanted the cyclone filter before it got into my piping system because I wanted to separate as much particulates as I could before they got to my actual sawdust filter. So, what this is, if I had to guess on diameter, it's probably about a 8 to 9 inch diameter. Um, what it used to be was a oil filter housing on an industrial rotary screw air compressor. We had one at work. Um, it broke down. It had a, a major meltdown, and we got a new one, and this was all obsolete stuff. Uh, it wouldn't interchange with our new one, and it was basically scrap. So, uh, I just snagged the housing out of it. It had a lid that, that has a, a clamp on lid, um, which was really handy to get in there if I ever needed to break it down or clean it out. Um, what I did was I cut an oval in the side of this, and I used two inch pipe. This is my gas outlet pipe. Um, two inch pipe was what I decided on because I knew it was more than enough to flow enough gas to run a 15 horse engine. Um, I wouldn't really recommend going, you could probably get away with inch and a half, inch and a quarter, but two inch, I would say, would probably be a minimum pipe diameter for your, your plumbing. So this is two inch pipe. It's stuck into my gas fire drum about an inch and a half and fully welded out. And then this is cut. Um, I did some shaping and cutting and grinding and cut it off at an angle and I had to kind of bevel it with a four and a half inch angle grinder to kind of fit the outside of this. Um, and the idea is you want this gas pipe to just snake right into the very side. You don't want to hit it right in the middle because the goal is to get the, the gases uh, under, under a vacuum to spin around inside there. So you want this pipe to come into the, the side of it. Um, and again, it doesn't have to be perfect, you know. Um, I built a little lower supporting bracket just because this was awfully heavy. Um, you may or may not have to do that depending on what you build your cyclone filter out of. At the bottom of the cyclone filter, um, most, most cyclone filters have like a funnel taper. Uh, I couldn't find anything that happened to have that taper. So, I mean, this is basically just a, a piece of pipe and it's kind of got a rounded bottom to it. It's nothing really special. In the bottom of that, I drilled a, a hole and I put in a one inch threaded uh, weld -alette. Basically, it's, it's just one-inch pipe threads that you just weld onto something. Um, out of the bottom of that, I've seen people use all sorts of things. I've seen them use uh, just, you could, you could screw in literally a, a pipe plug into the bottom of it, and when you're done running, just pull that plug and let the, let the stuff drain out. You could do that. I've seen people use ball valves down at the bottom so that they could close it off, empty the contaminants, put their jar back on, open the ball valve, and continue collecting. Um, again, there's nothing wrong with that. You could do that if you wanted to. Um, what I did on mine is I just put in a close nipple, a one-inch close nipple, uh, I'm sorry, a one-inch pipe nipple, uh, about three, four inches long, and I welded that to a piece of plate, and I took a 24-ounce sauerkraut jar, drilled a one-inch hole in the lid, four quarter-inch holes through the eighth-inch plate and the lid that matched up, nice big bead of orange RTV silicone and then bolted the lid to that plate. Um, so you can, you can stick your jar in there, tighten it, and, and there's a removable ash contaminant and, uh, and also you know, tar removal. But you don't have to. Uh, if you wanted, you could just stick a plug in the bottom of it and you know, after three, four hours of run time, drain it off. Open the plug and let it run out on the ground. So that's about it. Uh, that's really all it is. It's hollow. There's nothing inside. There's no funny, you know, fins or anything like that to try to get the air to spin. Uh, it's just a, an empty, hollow pipe. Uh, the dimensions really aren't important. Although I believe the smaller you go, the more force, the faster that air has to spin, uh, because it's traveling at the same rate of speed, but it's a smaller diameter. So uh, you know, if this were four inch or five inch, you know, it would probably work better as a cyclone filter than this, this eight or nine inch does. Um, so that's it. My, my plumbing, my uh, exit pipe, this is two inch 
automotive exhaust pipe, and it goes through the top of the lid, and it drops down about two inches below my, uh, my inlet pipe here. So the gas has to spin around, but it also has to travel downward before it can go back out the center of that pipe. That's it. That's all the cyclone filter is, basically. It just spins the gas at a fairly high rate of speed because you're pulling with your, your suction fan, your vacuum, uh, and it separates particulates. Now, one thing I noticed about this, uh, if you watch some of my other videos, there is a large, large temperature drop from my outlet gas, which is around 200 degrees, coming right out of the gasifier, to the cyclone outlet pipe. In this short little span, this one foot span, the gas drops 120 degrees. And I believe it drops so far, not because this is like an excellent cooler, uh, although it seems to do good. There's a lot of surface area, and the more surface area, the more heat you can dissipate, the cooler the gas will be. But because between this lid bolts on, between the lid and the body of the cyclone filter, I put a large bead of RTV, orange high, uh, high temp silicone. And what I believe that did is it acts as an insulator. The heat cannot transfer from the steel outer body to the steel lid because it's, it has an insulator of RTV silicone. And I'll talk more about that in, in when I get to the plumbing section of the videos. But uh, yeah, 120 degree temperature drop from my outlet pipe of the gasifier to the outlet pipe of the cyclone filter, which is six to eight inches away. That's a, a substantial heat drop in that short amount of, of time. And uh, I'm sorry, short span. And I would assume that most of that heat drop comes from that insulation from the RTB silicone. Basically, the heat thermodynamically cannot transfer from this steel to this steel because of that rubber layer. So that's it. That's my cyclone filter. Build it, I'd assume, a little smaller than this 8 or 9 inch would work better. Um, but materials really aren't important. If it's 10 inch, fine. If it's 6, fine. If it's 5, you know, even better. I believe the smaller you go, the better your cyclone filter is going to do the job that it's designed to do, and that's actually filter particulates. Um, there's my cyclone filter.